when I asked the cop why did he stop me, he says, well, you look suspicious. I have to be over 10 times since I was about 15 years old. I'm 26 now. When it actually happens to you, like you feel nervous, you don't know what to expect. You hear the stories about kid, people getting killed by the police and stop and frisk is also, can, is also part of that. They come up and they curse at you and they treat you very disrespectfully and ask you where you're going, where you're coming from, pat you down and fill your privates up and everywhere else and search my pockets. They've handcuffed me sometimes, even though I, I haven't, haven't been, wasn't being arrested. It's a scary environment to live in when the people who are supposed to be protecting you are your enemies and they make it blunt every day that they are your enemies. Oh, we're talking about stop and frisk, the NYPD's controversial policy here. And listen, uh, this show is a big fan and big supporter of uh, police. Uh, but I think this is much more than a shot at the cops, but more a question about a policy that's coming from the top, from both the mayor and from Police Plaza, uh, that is just creating more and more, uh, not only angst here, but even confrontations. you got hundreds of thousands of New Yorkers, primarily young black and Latino men, facing increased scrutiny. Now, back in May, federal judge granted a class action status to a lawsuit against the police. Judge said in many cases there was zero evidence of a crime or cause for suspicion. Now, same criticism, thousands uh, marching down Fifth Avenue in protest on Father's Day this year as a consequence. Now, the public outcry, it spurred war words between Mayor Michael Bloomberg and, and Police Commissioner Ray Kelly against critics of stop and frisk, like among others, Reverend Al Sharpton. And joining us now with the very latest on this ongoing debate is our own reporter, Kim Lengel, who's been covering this story from the beginning for us. Kim? Rich, that's right. You know, in the weeks since that silent march you mentioned, Mayor Bloomberg has been on the defensive, giving sermons at predominantly black churches around the city, trying to convince people that stop and frisk, one, can get guns off the street, and two, reduce crime. But the situation was made much worse this week when Commissioner Ray Kelly said that community leaders were focusing too much on stop and frisk, and they should focus more on the bloodshed. Now, that infuriated Reverend Al Sharpton, who led that silent at March, he's now calling for a meeting with the police commissioner. Sharpton fired back, saying the two issues are completely different. One is about civil rights, the other about gun violence. Now, it's important to remember that nearly nearly 80 people have been shot over the past week. That includes children who have been caught in the crossfire, a 14-year-old girl and a 3-year-old boy. Joining me now is Robert Ganji. You're the director of PROP, which is the Police Reform Organizing Project. And you have a meeting going on right now. It happens every month. It's not just for the recent news in Stop and Frisk. Exactly. So uh, PROP is uh, a project of the Urban Justice Center and Alpha focuses to expose and correct abusive uh, police practices in New York City that unfortunately take place every day. Stop and frisk is probably the most compelling example of the kind of harassment that the NYPD inflicts on certain people in New York City, usually people from low-income groups, from marginalized groups. So stop and frisk particular focus is on low-income black and brown men. But there are other tactics, harassment that the cops engage in that uh, sort of compromise the lives of street vendors, uh, homeless people, mentally ill people, sex workers. And our effort is to, again, educate the public about that, educate the public about why that's wrong and also counterproductive, and that there are better alternative practices that the cops can engage in. Now, you make an interesting argument when you say you're not opposed to a concentrated police presence in communities of colors, but you are opposed to stop and frisk. Right. Explain that. Right. Well, the we think that the cops should be assigned to high crime areas in New York City, and their focus should be on preventing crime. Stop and frisk, we believe, actually is counterproductive. We actually think it contributes to antagonism between the cops and the community, less collaboration, less cooperation, uh, less likelihood they could work together to solve crime. So what we're supporting is what's called problem-solving policing or community-oriented policing, where the police, instead of concentrating on punitive interactions, arrests, summons, and stop and frisk, their focus is on developing cooperative, collaborative relationships with community leaders, the clergy, merchants, to work together to solve problems that plague that community. Robert, thank you so much. Now, this meeting happens every month at the Urban Justice Center in downtown New York. It's for PROP, which is the Police Reform Organizing Project. And as you folks at home know, we've been reporting on stop and frisk for many months now, and that includes uh, our report on what Mayor Bloomberg said about the program 
needs to be mended, not ended. And to that end, we brought you a report. When the police opened their doors and showed us the stop and frisk training, and from our judgment, we told you that it didn't match what we were hearing on the street. So this is one more effort to bring the two sides together and get this program mended. Rich, back to you in the studio. Thank you very much, Kim. Hey, Dominic, just a, a quick practical question. A lot of the mayoral candidates, everyone I've seen so far for the Democrats, uh, they say they don't support the thing. They're up for, you know, Bloomberg ain't running it again next November. Does this thing go away at that point for getting even all the legal cases or no? And it's a strong possibility that stop and frisk, uh, it may be called something else, but officially it will be done once the mayor has changed, unless the crime rate goes back up.